directors who have joined here. Uh, transforming the Transformers, uh, an online enrichment session for the educators by Sandra Sahodia Conclave Kotem and CCSK uh, has been going on for the past few weeks. And uh, today we have come to the end of this phase two online session. And uh, let me introduce you uh, one of the wonderful faculties in informatic practices, Mrs. Gigi Dibin of Chinmay Avdialya Kotem. I hope you all are aware about the recent changes that CBSE has introduced into the assessment pattern. So uh, it is very important that we all are updated with the, the changes that are required and uh, the competency-based assessment that is happening right now. Uh, it has been noted that in every subject, uh, the comprehension skills and uh, competencies, core competencies of children plays a lot in answering the questions in the right way. So uh, our role has become uh, very crucial in molding them to face the final board examination in a very uh, confident way. So I hope JJ ma'am will be throwing light into all those confused areas which you are facing and uh, let this be a very uh, interactive and active session uh, so that you uh, you raise your doubts and you discuss your uh, issues or concerns or whatever suggestions or whatever you have with JJ ma'am. So uh, wishing you all a very wonderful session. Over to Gigi. Thank you, Vinita, ma'am. Good evening, teachers. Uh, welcome you all to the session of uh, decoding the sample question paper for the year 2022 uh, 23. Uh, I hope I'm audible to all. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, when I go through the participant list, I can uh, see many of the names which are quite familiar to me, the teachers uh, whom I have met during the evaluation camp or uh, in my class, my school itself and uh, during the practical sessions. So all of you are well uh, experienced teachers here. So nothing more uh, from my side to add, but still a few of the teachers may be new and whatever experience I am having, whatever uh, I want to share with you, I'll be sharing with you in this session, right? So uh, let me share my screen. We will start, uh, we, have got, we have got only one hour time from seven to eight and within one, this one hour time, a uh, lot many things to be shared with you and then the question paper, sample question paper. I will just go through the sample question paper and uh, in between the questions, uh, I'll be adding something which I knew about that uh, particular question and which we as teachers has to take care when we are teaching our students. Right? So let me start directly with the session. I'll share the screen. Uh, hope it is visible. Can anyone yes, please? Mom. Yes, okay, thank you. So I'll start with the quote, very famous quote by Andre Agassi. If you don't practice, you don't deserve to win. And uh, this particular quote is very, very apt for our subject informatics practices, right? Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, all the teachers are talking about the new changes that is happening in the question paper pattern, uh, the comprehensive type of questions that is coming up. But as far as the informatics teachers are concerned, this is nothing new, right? We have been into this type of questions from a very long time and, uh, since we were handling the C++ or we are uh, using the language uh, Java, whatever it is, we have been into this type of questions only, right? It is only the understanding uh, type of question that we see in the question paper. And now the new pattern question paper or the Python question paper, this is the first time I will remind you. Uh, this our set of students is the first batch of students who is going to write the exam the complete syllabus, right? Last year, there was a first batch of students, but they wrote it in two terms, term one, which is purely objective type question, and the term two, uh, of course, uh, they have a little bit of quotients, that's all, but uh, the entire syllabus was not covered in it. Right? So this is the first time the students are going to appear for the entire syllabus, right? So if you look into the sample question paper, you can see that 
most of the questions are application based. So though the CBSC say it is 60% or 80%, whatever it is for IP, 95% of the questions, whether it is from the Python part or from the database part, 95% of the questions are application based questions. Right? So rather than teaching the students the theory, if you give them the practice, the question paper practice, only then they will be able to write the exam properly. Otherwise, it will be like a civil student, civil engineering student going to the uh, work construction site, right? They will not be knowing anything, what to do, how to do, right? So what I suggest all the teachers who has joined the session is to give practice, practice, practice. Okay, from my personal experience also, I can say, the more the number of question papers you make these students solve, they will be more comfortable when they write the exam, right? No question should be new to them. They should be familiar with the pattern of the questions, right? That is the ultimate aim of giving them the practice, right? You may not find much uh, sample question papers or the previous year's question papers because this is the first time they're going to write the Python, uh, uh, I mean, IP exam, board exam in the uh, Python subject, right? So you may not be uh, getting so many previous year's question papers but of course uh, you you may be members of so many groups right there are n number of groups for the computer teachers and you may be the member of those groups and in most of the groups the teachers will be sharing their question papers right so you can take all those question papers give it to the students help them to solve those question papers not simply giving them the question papers but you have to help them to solve how to find the answer, not the answer, right? You, sh you should not give them the answer, but you should give them the method. You should tell them the method to solve that question, right? That is what as teachers we can do for the students, right? So give them much practice. That is the first and the foremost thing that I want to tell each and every teacher here, right? Now, coming to the, uh, the I mean, split up of the mass, most of you will be knowing what are the, um, uh, what are the uh, units we are having? What is the mark pattern? Still, I will just uh, go through it. We are having four units. The first unit is the data handling using pandas and the data visualization, uh, which for which we have a weightage of 25 marks and the database query using my, uh, MySQL for that also the weightage is 25. So these are the two main units we are having. And if the student, uh, if a student is thorough in these two units, he can get 50 marks, right? So most of the marks, uh, most of the questions come into, into these two units, right? Then we had two theory uh, units that is introduction to computer networks and societal impacts, right? The, though we say it is a theory chapter, from this also we will be getting only the application level, uh, not only, right? You will be having theory question as well as application type of questions, right? So that uh, two units, they carry 10 mark each, so total comes to 70. And the next 30 marks, that is for the practicals, we have uh, uh, practical uh, from Pantas, we have the question, we have to put questions for eight marks and there will be seven queries, which carries seven marks. Uh, practical file, the record uh, will be will be given five marks for it, project work five marks and the Viva also five marks. Right? So total 30 marks for the, the, uh, for the practical session. Right? So I hope I don't have to explain this much. And in case if you're having any query, you can ask me right? in between you can ask. I don't want to have a one way kind of lecture. I expect it to be an interactive session. So teachers in case if you're having any questions, any queries, you can ask in between, right? Now, this is the uh, blueprint of the question paper, which we are having, right? This is based on the sample question paper most of the time. Uh, there will be slight changes in the uh, question, uh, maybe one, one mark question, two mark question, here and there it may change, but as such, the entire structure of the question paper, it used to be like the sample question paper, right? So according to the sample question paper from Pantas, we are having four, four one mark question. From the database part, you will be getting for six one mark question, and from network, three one mark question, and societal impact, five one mark question, right? So total, there will be 18 one mark question. Out of this 18 one mark question, the 17th and the 18th, the last two questions of this session, that is session A, that will be a session and a reasoning type of question. Then the next session will be two mark question from which you will be getting three questions from the pandas part, two questions from the database part, and one question each from the network and the societal impacts, right? 
Third session is uh, three mark question. That is session C carries questions of three marks. There will be five questions. Out of that five questions, two questions will be from the pandas part and two questions will be from the database part. There will not be any three mark question from the network part, but there will be one five mark, uh, five mark question from the network session. Right? That will be the uh, design type of question. Right? You will be given a situation and you will be asked to design a network. What are the devices which you have to use? All those type of questions. From societal impasse, again, one three mark question will be the three five mark question will be there in session D, out of which one will be from the pandas. It can be either based on the series or it can be based on the um, uh, data frame or it can be from the matplotlib. Then one question will be from the database and one question will be from, uh, from the network. As I told you, it will be a uh, design question, right? Then uh, last session, it is four mark question. There will be two questions for four mark. One will be from the pandas Python part, and the second one will be from the data database part. Right? So all together, from pandas, you will be getting twenty five marks. Uh, from database, another twenty five marks. Networks ten marks, and societal impact second carries ten marks. Right? So total seventy marks. This is the overall pattern of your yeah, of our question paper, IP question paper. I don't say your question paper. It is our question paper. Okay. So this is the blueprint which is based on the sample question paper released by the CBSE. There can be one or two uh, changes in the uh, pattern of pattern of the question, but overall pattern it remains the same, right? Now coming to the various sessions of your question paper, you will be having five sessions. Session A purely of one mark question. In this part, you may get the theory question, right? This is only the area where you will be getting the theory question, right? Otherwise, most of the question will be application-based question. And the 17th and 18th question, that will be, as I said, it will be assertioning and a reasoning-based question. Session B, there will be seven short answer questions of uh, two mark each. Uh, session C is again five mark, uh, three mark questions. There will be five questions. Each question carries three marks. Session D is long, uh, long answer type question where you will be getting three questions and each question carries five marks. Right? So definitely this is not a long five mark question uh, where uh, you have to write not many theory questions. Again, it will be subdivided into five questions or three questions or four questions. And each question will be carrying one mark or two marks. Okay? So only that type of question we are having, like we don't have long theory question like uh, uh, how the other subjects are having. Right? And the last session, session E, that is four mark questions. Uh, two questions will be the one will be from the database and one will be from the Python part. Right? So this is the structure of the question paper. Hope I'm uh, clear. Is, uh, is, is it clear, teachers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so yes, first, you, uh, you as a teacher should be very, very familiar with the, all the type of question that can come in each session. Then only you will be able to uh, convey those ideas to the teachers, uh, to the students in front of you. Right? So be thorough with the question paper pattern and what type of question can come in each session. That is what we have to be thorough. Right. So I'll just uh, go through the question paper, like uh, the sample question paper, which is released by the CBSC, right? question by question, we will be going. The first question that is from the network part, that uh, television cable network is an example of LAN, WAN, MAN, internet, right? what is the uh, type of cable, uh, type of network that is used in the television cable, right? So when you teach the student the type of networks, right? the different type of networks, with example, you have to teach them right? because you as you when you see the question paper, you can see even if it is a uh, function in MySQL, they will be asking to explain it with the help of an example, right? So whatever you teach, teach them with the help of an example, right? So a television cable network that is not generally the man. Uh, and one more thing here, which you have to tell the students is uh, normally when we ask what is the type of network, right? this is another question, the type of network which can come in the five mark question, right? So when you uh, ask the question, right, the first thing they will answer the what type of network it is, immediately they will say it is LAN, WAN, MAN, etc., right? 
uh, but when we correct the paper, when we go for the valuation, we can see that if they write the short form, land, van, man, they will be getting only half mark. Right? They will have to write the complete thing. If it is land, they have to write local area network. Right? So teach them to write in, in that way because whatever they practice, they will repeat in the exam also. So if you, give, if you say that now you can write like a land, but when you go for the exam, you have to write like local area network, they're not going to do it. Right? So right from the beginning, when you give the practice itself, let them practice as local area network itself. Don't ask them to write L, uh, LAN, right? Don't write the short forms, right? So that is the first question. Moving to the second question that is from the societal impasse, which of the following is not a cyber crime? These are all uh, straight questions. Uh, data theft, installing antivirus for protection, forgery, cyberbullying. Right? Now, uh, when you teach them the cyber crime, the societal impasse, I will uh, suggest all the teachers to refer to the uh, NCRT textbook also. Right? There, I, I don't know whether you are following the NCRT textbook. Some of the teachers will be following NCRT textbook. Or, uh, some of the teachers are following the private publishers like Sumita Arora or Preeti Arora. Right. Uh, so if you go for the uh, private publishers like Sumitha Arora, Preeti Arora, you will be getting so many questions in that uh, uh, in that book, and it is very vast also. Right. But when you take the NCRT NCRT textbook, it will be very very brief. Right. They have given only the essence, whatever is absolutely necessary. Only those things are given the. And uh, there is no much question answers at the end of the chapter. They have not given much question answers, some uh, practice questions also, right? Uh, so those problems are the with the NCRT, but when you take this chapter, especially this chapter, right, the societal impacts, try to cover all those portions, all those topics that are given in the uh, NCRT textbook, right? Because uh, the questions, it may sometimes be based on the NCRT, NCRT textbook, right? So if you go for the public uh, um, publisher, private publishers, uh, they may not be touching all the points that is uh, given in the NCRT, NCRT textbook. Because one time last year, I think in the sample question paper, uh, they have asked about the uh, communication etiquettes or uh, net, and, I mean, in other textbook, it is the general term, etiquettes, uh, what are the etiquettes that you have to follow, right? But uh, in the NCRT textbook, they have again classified in, it into various subtopics and each topic they have given some uh, terms like uh, be respectful, be ethical, all those things, uh, certain topics are given there, right? Now, uh, last year, one question was, what are the communication etiquettes? I don't remember it exactly. Uh, so they have given those options like be respectful, be ethical, right? So these terms that will be new for the student if they are following the uh, Sumita Arora or Preeti Arora book, right? So for this chapter, for the uh, societal impacts, please refer the uh, um, what is the NCRT textbook also, right? So give them some notes, give them the main points or ask them to uh, refer to that. You can uh, provide the PDF to those students. So it's available in the CBSC website that download it and provide it to the students so that they will go through those uh, uh, those uh, topic also, those questions also. And uh, cyber crimes, whatever cyber crime is described in that textbook, uh, that must be explained to the students, right? so like uh, so many terms like phishing, farming, uh, identity theft, all those things, right? There is only slight difference between all these uh, cyber crimes. Uh, so make all these cyber crimes very, very clear to the students, right? That can, that will be coming only as an application question. If you, uh, in the last part of this uh, question paper, sample question paper, in the three mark question, they have given a situation where a child is a victim of cyber bullying, right? So from the explanation, from the description that, that is given in the question, the child should be able to understand what type of cyber crime it is. So just simply by hearting the definition that will not help these students, they have to understand it. That's what I said, 95% of our question paper is application based, right? right? They will never ask what is cyber bullying or define cyber bullying or define phishing, define farming. Now, no such question you can see in the question paper, right? It is all application type. Right. So please uh, make the students understand what exactly that particular cyber crime is, what is happening when they fall a victim of the cyber crime. Right? What, how can they identify that they are undergoing cyber bullying? What are the symptoms that, that they, will, uh, they will be experiencing when they undergo cyber bullying? That's what you have to make the students clear and not the definitions, right? 
So this phase 10 that is uh, installing antivirus this is a very clear question, straight question. They can easily, they can understand which is not a cyber crime. And uh, what is an example of uh, e-waste? Again, uh, the concept of e-waste, it is a very short topic in your uh, text, in our textbook. And each and everything in the textbook is very, very important. Don't think that this one, this part is not important. This part is a little bit important. That is nothing like important or unimportant. Uh, a question can be from the most unimportant part also. Right? Last year, a question, uh, it was uh, like, what is a plugin? Give an example for plugin. That is, so that was the question, right? So that is something which uh, we won't give much stress on. Uh, but that was a question for the board exam. Right? So touch upon each and every uh, point that is given in the syllabus. Everything has to be explained and every topic has to be dealt with equal importance, right? So a ripened mango, unused old shoes, unused old computers, empty cola cans out of this, which is an e-waste. E-waste is electronic waste, only the electronic items, uh, electronic item that is given here is a computer. So naturally that will be your answer. Then uh, coming to the fourth question that is uh, from the MySQL. This is the type of question which you can expect from the uh, MySQL, but database part, right? Either it will be a question to write the query or to write the output, or it, they may ask you to write the function name, name of the function, or they may give a function and they will be asking to explain that function, okay? So output question, and if you see the blueprint, you can see maximum number of uh, one mark question that is from the uh, database part, right? So, and most of the questions that is output based question. So the child should be familiar with the output that will be generated in the um, uh, MySQL questions, right? They will be doing the query, they will be getting the output also, right? They will be happy if they are not getting an error, right? But ask them to analyze the output, how the output is this, Played, right? how the heading will be, how the uh, answer will be displayed, whether it is in a single line or it is going to the second line, right? uh, what are columns are displayed, all those things they have to analyze and see. So whenever you make the child do a MySQL question, Ask the child to analyze the output, right? See the output, understand the output, right? So suppose if this is a question, right? So from this, you can understand what will be the heading, right? So whatever comes after the seller query, that will be coming as a heading, right? So that teach the student like that, right? So this will come as a heading. Let them learn with the heading itself, though we are not considering the heading for the uh, exam uh, for while awarding the marks for the questions, ask them to prepare in that way itself. Right? Let them write the heading, then write the uh, answer. Right? Because when we correct the paper, we can see they would have written all the unnecessary columns. Right? They are, instead of writing the uh, when they are asked to write the output, instead of writing the required column, they will be writing all the column names, or they will be writing the unwanted column names also. So if it is a good paper or if it is a child who is getting good marks, this can be a reason for losing the marks, right? So if you teach them like from the select, this is the these are the columns that is mentioned in the select select clause, right? So that will come in the uh, that will come as a heading for your output. So the child will never write unwanted columns in the output, right? So teach them to write in that way. So here the question is which type of values will not be considered by SQL while executing the following statement, right? So he should understand what is this count function. It is an aggregate function. And what is the speciality of aggregate function? They will never uh, consider the null value. They will ignore the null value. So these two concepts, if the child is thorough, he will be able to answer this question, right? So here numeric value, text value, null value, date value is given. So if a child knows that, that this is a, um, aggregate function or uh, group function and group function normally ignore null value, she will be able, he or she will be able to write this question. So aggregate function ignores the null value. Next question that is again from the database. If column fees contains the data set 5,000, 8,000, 7,000, 500, 5,000, 8,000, what will be the output after the execution of a given query, right? Now here, uh, two things are uh, uh, has to be noted. One is some function they have to use. When they have to use the sum function, they have to add up all the values. That is, what is the sum function doing? 
Second thing is distinct is that, right? What is the purpose of this distinct keyword? What happens when you put the distinct, right? What happens if you are not using the distinct? What happens when you use the distinct, right? So when you teach the student, make them do the output, write the query with the distinct keyword and without distinct keyword so that they will understand what is the difference between the two. So distinct, it normally ignores the repeated uh, duplicate values. So here duplicate value 5,000 and 8,000 is getting repeated so you don't have to consider those two those uh, two values just add up 5000 8000 and 7500 so the answer will be 20500 right so that's what i said the student has to be very very thorough with the concept otherwise he will not be able to answer this question Okay. So then when you teach them, you will be teaching what is an aggregate function, what are the different types of aggregate function and what each of aggregate function is doing. But when it comes to the practical type, practical side, they will find it very difficult. Right. So make these concepts very clear and uh, make them see when they do questions to uh, to uh, do the answer to all three question papers minimum 10 question papers they must do right before going for the exam they have to do minimum 10 question papers and that too with the help of the teachers right you have to explain uh, each and everything right here yeah, what is some what is distinct right but if you give this question paper to the student what they will do is they will do this query in the system they will get the output and they will take the output right they will find the answer that's all what they will do but how they have got the that answer they will never analyze that's what the teacher has to help the child okay so that is about that this uh, straight theory question o in for fos for stands for open source f four stands for free open source software there's a concept of uh, open source software examples for the open source software right now when you teach them the different types of softwares you have the proprietary software open source software free and open source software is the freeware is the shareware is the all these things please ex explain all to them that right? maybe you may not be having it in the syllabus but still make them clear about all these concepts so they so when a question is given to them uh, it's a straight question, this is a straight question, but sometimes they may give an application question also. So uh, if, I uh, mean, say, uh, as a person has to use a software and he was asked to pay this bunch of amount, what type of software it does, right? So that kind of application question can come, okay? So the child should be ready to answer any type of question. Uh, so what is uh, force? Uh, what are the features of uh, open source software? How is it different from freeware? Uh, examples for each type is example for open source software uh, when you teach them the example again you have the category right uh, open source uh, databases the open source uh, programming software is other way right? so let them learn that category also seventh question again it is from uh, mysql that's why i told you most of the questions in the one mark question that is from the my sql right and this is again right they find out the query right uh, uh, which sql statement do we use to find out the total number of records present in the table orders right total number of uh, 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 if you want to find the total number of uh, rows right uh, record means rows uh, and this terms also you have to teach them right sometimes uh, in, in the question paper they may not give it as a table they may give it as relation right so they should know uh, the table and the, the word table and the relation it represents the same thing similarly the records rows tuples all those things means the same and the columns fields and the attributes they mean the same thing most of the time the child may not be able to understand the question that is how they will make mistakes right so these terms which can come that should also be familiar to the students right so here they want to find the total for finding the total they have to use the count function so easily they can find the uh, uh count right now there are two things here one is the count is there another one is sum right so as soon as they see this total they may pick the sum function right so ask the students to find read the question thoroughly and not only the questions they have to go through every options right there may be slight difference between the options especially when it comes to the data frame part right uh, so they have to read all the options and pick out the correct one, right? Not just five. when they suppose the sum is coming in the first option, as soon as they see the sum, they will uh, choose that as the answer, right? So the, the ask them not to do that. Let them read all the options and then come to, uh, come to the correct answer. Uh, right, which of the following is not an aggregate? That is a simple question. Uh, uh, sum is an aggregate, count is an aggregate, average is also an aggregate function. So round is a mathematical function, which is not an aggregate function, it is a single row function.
Next one, which one of the following function is used to find the largest value from the given data? Right? These, these question, though it is a, a one mark question, a, a multiple choice question, the option given to them will be very confusing. Right? CBSC is very, very particular in that uh, matter. They won't give the correct answer properly. They will put all the confusing options in the uh, choices. Right? So this child has to be very careful. Here, uh, largest value, there are two things. Max is the maximum is there unless the child is thorough with that uh, he will be writing maximum, right? So max function to display the last row of a series is you may uh, write. Uh, so this is what I said, right? You have the tail function, two tail functions are there, right? One is a capital letter and another one is a small letter. The child know that knows that uh, for finding the last five rows, he has to use the tail function, right? But when it comes to the option, he is having tail uh, and uh, small, capital tail is the small tail is there, right? So he will not be going to the last option. As soon as he finds the uh, first option that is tail function is there, he has learned that tail is the function which is used for the for finding the last he will immediately choose the second one as the answer okay and another thing which they will do is uh, along with this tail they will put an s also tail will be the tails will be the right so naturally the child will get confused whether it is tail or tails okay uh, so that is one thing and here uh, when you write the tail, there are three options and three methods in which you can write the tail function, head function or the tail function. You can simply open and close the bracket, which means the default value is five. You can put five inside the bracket. That will also work as an argument. You can give five. This option, uh, it's not given in the textbook, right? I don't think it is given, but this will also work, right? This will also give the last five values, right? So sometimes they may give all these three plus one, some other option will be given and they will be asked to pick out which are the correct, which are the correct options and they will give one, two, three are correct, one and two is correct, one and uh, uh, one, only one is correct. So that such kind of question can also come, right? So give the, when you teach the uh, series, the data, stand up, uh, pantas, either the, uh, whether it will be the series or it is the data frame, uh, Apart from the things that direct things that is given in the textbook, there are many other methods also for accessing or getting the answer. Right? Uh, say for example, when you uh, when you have to display a column, right? You can put the from a data frame. If you want to display a column, you can put the column name within the square bracket, or you can use the dot notation also, right? So they have in the syllabus they have only given the, the methods to display the values, right? But how to display or which are the methods that has to be taught that is not given in the textbook, right? So teach them that they can use the square bracket, they can use the dot notation also, right? In the question paper they can put anything. Right? So uh, prepare. I mean, as teachers we have to go beyond the textbook, explore it. Right? find out which are the different ways in which a, a statement can be written and teach all those methods to the students, right? So this is, okay, so this is one additional thing which I want to tell you. Uh, in which of the following statement will import Pantas library, you can see all are almost a similar type of uh, options, right? You have import in all the things you have the import, Pantas is the RAS is the PYPD, so many things are given the Right now here, one thing uh, you have to uh, tell the two students is case sensitive, right? In data frame, I think only in two places we will be using capital letter. One is for the series method and another one is for the data frame method. Apart from this, everywhere we are using the small letters only, right? So when they get a question like this, rather than going for the correct answer, ask them to find out which all are the wrong options and finally uh, reach the correct answer. So when they take the first option, it is uh, I is capital, so that cannot be your answer. Second one is P is capital for this P pantas is capital, that is that cannot be your answer. For the fourth one is pantas, S is missing, right? So these are small, small mistakes or small, small errors that is given, right? So they have to go, uh, go through the answer thoroughly and uh, uh, find out which is the correct answer, okay? Uh, and PD, PY, PD, though uh, we are telling, whenever we say the import statement, we will be saying import pandas as PD, import uh, numpy as NP, import matplotlib dot pyplot as PLT, right? So the child in his mind, this PD, PLT, NPy is getting registered, right? So he knows nothing other than these three things, right? 
say if instead of uh, PD, if they have used PY, they say it is an error, right? PY cannot be used over here. So tell them that uh, this PD, PY, P, and uh, NP, NP, all those things are just the variables which we are using. And according to the question, they have to change that name. And sometimes in the query, uh, this as uh, will not be given, right? So directly they have to use pandas.series, right? So when they find that format, they may, they may be confused, right? So it's, uh, tell them the PD is the shortcut, short name which we are using instead of pandas. And in case if PD is not given, they can directly use the pandas also. Uh, next question, let us say which of the following can be used to specify the data while creating a data frame. A data frame can be created from a series, from a list of dictionaries, uh, from a structured NDRA. List of dictionaries can be the list of lists can be the a dictionary of list can be the so many things are there, right? So when you teach this uh, list of dictionary, when creating a data frame, uh, uh, this data frame is uh, an area where you have to give more importance. Uh, you can create a, a data frame from a list of list, from a list, from a diction list of dictionary, from a list of uh, uh, list. So many uh, dictionaries of dictionaries are also possible. So what happens to the index? What happens to the column heading when you use a dictionary of dictionaries or when you use a list of dictionaries? Which part is going as a key uh, index? Which part is going as a column heading? Make all those things very clear to the students because sometimes in the output, uh, here again, the multiple choice question itself, they may get such kind of question. Or oh, what will be the number of rows and number of columns when they are using a list of dictionary, dictionary of dictionaries or list of list what happens to the inner list what happens to the outer list all those things right? there are a, way, a variety of options for this creation of data frame uh, from a list of dictionaries or dictionary of list uh, list and dictionary right so uh, make them do all these uh, various options make them very clear to what happens when you put it inside the square bracket when what happens when you put it in two brackets with a single bracket all those things right please make it clear to the students right now the answer is you can create a data frame from all of this Next question, which among the following is not an example of browser or those browser examples, straight question, I was just a, um, uh, what is that? It is an antivirus and all the other form, Firefox and Edge, uh, those are all the uh, browsers. Uh, and here again, one more thing I want to specify is yeah, when they write the example, right? Or there may be question to uh, some, maybe if they are lucky, they may get a question like what is a browser? Give example for browsers, right? So when they write the browsers, there are so many browsers which are not so familiar, right? Uh, so ask them to write the exam. When they write the example, ask them to write the example which are very common, like a Chrome, Firefox, Sage, all those are common browsers which we are using. Because last time, uh, those who have attended the valuation camp, they may be knowing uh, there was a question like, what is a plugin? Give example for plugin, right? So this plugin, uh, there are n number of plugins, right? Most of the uh, those names we teachers don't know. Right. So what we were doing is we were Googling and we were finding out whether this is uh, a, this is actually a plugin or not. Right. So uh, what happens is towards the end, we may not be getting time to check each and every uh, every plugin and give them marks. Right. So sometimes it may happen Right. we all are teachers. Uh, we have a lot many papers to be corrected. So only uh, sometimes we may stick to those uh, value, those answers that is given in the answer key. Okay. So in the answer key, they will provide only those common names or the names which is given um, and which we use very frequently, right? So uh, instead of going for uh, it's a pay, answer paper is not a place where they have to uh, exhibit their uh, gender knowledge, right? About the knowledge, their knowledge about the various things they are using, right? So let them write those example that is either given in the textbook or which is quite common. Like when we see Chrome, Firefox, Edge, we know these are all, all, all our browsers, right? So we, they will be getting marked very easily. So uh, let them write those familiar names only. Ask them not to write those unfamiliar things which, which they are using. 
okay and they won't get a chance to explain that this is a, a correct browser or this is a correct plugin we i am using this right if we are correcting and if the child if the paper is given to the child of course they can come to us and argue that this is a kind of plugin which they are using but when uh, for the board exam they don't have an uh, they have a chance to explain right so ask them to write only those common uh, examples Next one is uh, question number 14, which is in MySQL, which function is used to display current date and time? That is now function. Uh, explain the difference between all those functions and go a little bit beyond the uh, syllabus, right? They have given only very few questions in the, um, very few functions in the syllabus, but there are like a day name and a week name is a day of the week is that so many functions are there. So please, uh, I teach them all those functions, how to find out the name of a month and how to get the number which represents the month, uh, how to get the week name, week number, etc. Legal term used to describe the rights of a creator of original creative or artistic work that is copyright. Uh, copyright, patent, uh, license, all those things are similar terms. Uh, explain the difference and also explain the um, validity period of these, uh, these things. Dash is a trail of data we leave behind when we visit any website to fill in uh, data or perform any transaction. That is obviously everyone will be knowing it is a digital footprint. And this is question number 17 and 18, assertion and reasoning type of question. There are four options. These are the options that is given, that will be given on the, at the uh, top of these two questions. They have to write uh, one choice out of those, right? Uh, both a and uh, a and r are true a and r are true uh, first one r is not the r is the correct explanation second one r is not the correct explanation maybe uh, like uh, it may in ip it's not possible to give an explanation because it is not uh, like science it is not the reason exact reason uh, but it will be uh, related to the first one sometimes it will be entirely a wrong statement or it can be a different explanation so from the explanation if it is related to the uh, assertion they can write it as a correct explanation otherwise they can say it is not a correct explanation it's the first one internet cookies are text files that contain small pieces of packet uh, so, sorry small pieces of data like a username password uh, and the user's preference while surfing the internet, and that is true. Uh, second one is to make browsing the internet faster and easy to require to store certain information on the server's computer server. Whenever we access the server, definitely it becomes slow, right? That we know, right? So it will not make the internet fast, faster, so that is false. Data frame has both row and the column, that is correct. A data frame is a two dimension labeled data structure like a table in MySQL, that is also correct. Right? So you cannot say this is actually the correct explanation for a, a database has both a row and a column index, but it is related, right? So you can say R is a correct explanation of A. Now that is uh, part A, all the questions in part A are compulsory. The child is expected to answer all the questions, right? There is no choice for that. Second session, that is B session, that is of questions of two marks. Uh, first question, uh, there is an R question, right? Uh, so we can, uh, don't know how the board question will be, but sometimes there may be an R question, right? So explain the term where that is direct theory question. What is a web page? What is a home page? Or mention any phone networking goals, right? So all those things are given. Web page is a uh, page where all the informations will be displayed and it is created with the help of an HTML. And home page is the first page that we will be getting when you open a website. Now here you have to teach them what is the difference between a web page, website, uh, home page, uh, then uh, what is a web, or what is an internet, right? Internet, that was the question which was asked last year. What is the difference between internet and uh, uh, webs? Uh, I think it is website. That internet is a collection of uh, computers, right? Interconnected computers you call as an internet, whereas website or www, uh, it is a storage where you will be storing all the information, all uh, collection of websites, which uh, where all the informations are stored, right? So where if you want to uh, you, uh, write an example for uh, internet, it will be the uh, interconnection, any network uh, you can mention. Uh, but when you mention the web, it will be www, any website name can be mentioned. Uh, next one, a situation uh, is given that Rishmi is a database administrator who needs to display the housewife's total number of records of red and yellow house. Uh, she encountered an error while executing the query. She wrote the query as 
uh, sell a house, count staff from student group by house, were house equal to red or house equal to yellow, right? Now, according to the answer key given to this, they have mentioned that uh, work clothes cannot be used by group by, right? There is no such rule that work cannot be used by group by, but having cannot be used by group by, right? Now, in this case, uh, the error was uh, like uh, the order, right? The order in which the clauses has to appear that was changed, right? Uh, when you write the clause, the first clause will be select, the second clause will be from, the third clause has to be word, fourth clause is order by, then comes the group by, then comes the having, right? Now here they have put a group by after the, uh, I mean the word after the group by, right? That is why they are getting an error. Uh, so, if you put this work clause before the group by, the query will be correct, right? So, you, either the child can put the work clause in front of the group by or the child has to uh, replace the having with the uh, group, uh, sorry, word with the having, right? Both the answers are correct, but uh, uh, I think the statement which they, the reason which they have given that is wrong because work clause works with the group by i hope uh, i'm right um ma'am can i ask you one thing yes. along with having close we can only use aggregate functions right uh, not exactly. You can use the uh, uh, single row function that is equal to using any of the operator. But when you are using a individual uh, uh, condition there, that column must be there in the select clause. So, for example, here I am using the house. Okay, so if I put house equal to yellow, this house column should be there in the select, right? If it is there in the select, it will be working. But if I'm not putting this house in the select close, and if I put this house in the having close, definitely it will give an error. Hope I'm clear. Yes, ma'am. Okay, otherwise, uh, uh, in the uh, having clause, you can use single row function or you can use group by function. I mean, aggregate function, both will work. Can I move to the next question? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, the purpose of order by clause, that is a uh, straight theory question. It is used to arrange the data in the ascending or descending order. And uh, with the example, they have to explain. So whenever they ask a theory question, they will ask it to ask to explain it with the help of an example. This example, most of the time, it will be available in the question itself, question paper itself. Somewhere they would have uh, used it. They can quote the same example. Or if they know any uh, other example, they can use that example also. Right Now, when writing the example, example, uh, say for uh, say uh, they have to uh, write an example, they have to explain the aggregate function, any aggregate function like a sum function or maximum function. Uh, these function normally it works on the column, they will not work with the values, you cannot put values inside the sum function, right? it will not accept values as arguments, right. So most of the time what the students used to do is they will write some uh, select sum of within bracket, they will give some values, right, that will not work. So if they have to give an example, that is, uh, you have to teach the students how to write the example also. Right. Uh, so when they write an example for uh, aggregate functions or uh, any of the aggregate function, uh, instead of using raw data, they have to uh, state, I mean, they have to give an example of a table, consider a table with a, such a column, uh, salary column having some values. To find the total salary, they can write uh, select sum of sal or sum of salary from the table. Right? They should never put values inside the bracket that please uh, tell, your, tell the students. Yes, we okay. Uh, next question is write a program to create a series uh, object using dictionary. Uh, if you teach them how to create the series, uh, they will be able to write this one. And whenever you uh, create a series, whenever you write a program, if it is not a statement, there can be two type of question. One is write a statement, and another one is write a program. If it is write a program, they have to start from Im, uh, import statement. If it is given, it is already imported, then you know how to give, right? So in this example, in this question, it is mentioned that the Pandas library has been imported as PD. That means it is already imported. So the child, you know how to import it again. Otherwise, if this statement is, if this clause is not given in the question, the child has to start with the import statement because that, that statement also carries mark, okay? 
So import statement here, since it is mentioned, you don't have to write it. Now you have uh, creating a, C, a dictionary is that then using that dictionary inside the series. It is always better write it as two different statements. Okay, so because because the marking scheme is one mark each, one mark each for the correct Python statement, right? So one mark will be for the creation of the dictionary and one mark will be for the creation of the series object, right? So if they put it inside the uh, square bam I and mean, inside the bracket as a parameter, uh, don't know how the mark will mark will be given. That depends upon the marking scheme, right? So it is always better ask the students to create the dictionary object or list object separately and then use it in the uh, creation of the series or in the case of a data frame, okay? Uh, this is again a straight question. This is the benefits of uh, theory question letters, e waste management or mention any for net equates. So they can write any, uh, any for net equates. What will be the output of the following code? Here you can see import pandas and this is another part which you have to explain very well to the students, right? Two method, you can give the condition A greater than 45 is the, this A greater than 45, you can put in a square bracket. That is A within square bracket, you can write A greater than 45. So both will be giving two different answers. If you give simply the condition along with the series object, it will give you only true or false answer, right? It will check every uh, value and return a value, either a true value or a false value for every uh, value in the series. But when you put it inside the square bracket A, within square bracket A greater than 45, it will check the series it will find out which value is satisfying that condition and only those values will be returned, right? So these are two things which normally uh, students will get confused. So make it very, very clear to them how to write the condition, whether to put the condition simply like this or uh, put it inside the square bracket, right? Sometimes they may be asked uh, that uh, the question will be uh, to write a statement to, um, uh, what's that, uh, to write a, I mean, uh, write a statement to display the values which is greater than 45. So they will simply write A greater than 45, which will not give the answer. Uh, they have to put A within square bracket A greater than 45. So these two things make very, very clear to the students. It should, we make them practice those things, let them uh, get the output, understand the output so that, that that will be registered. Otherwise, however you explain it to them, they will not be remembering it. Then when they write the exam, definitely they will be making mistakes. So make them do this again and again. And if you, if you give them the question paper practice in the question paper, this question will be coming repeatedly. And when you explain it, maybe that will register in their mind. Uh, 25th question is a Python code is given to you and you're asked to predict the output. First one is list the index. Index, columns, all those are the attributes. Right? So attributes of data frame, attributes of series, and how the output will be displayed. Right? So when you give, uh, uh, say for example, shape, if you are using, you will be getting the answer as a tuple within the round bracket. So they have to represent it and the round bracket itself. Right? Uh, when they uh, give the size, how the value will be displayed, it will be a single number. Right, so how the output will be, right? For each attribute, how the output will be, right? What is the purpose of the attribute and how the output will be? These two things, they have to be very, very clear. Right, so index of the uh, data frame indexes. Uh, see, again, here also you can see this is a dictionary of dictionaries. What happens when you put it as a dictionary of dictionary, right? There are two keys. One is the key of the outer dictionary and another one is the key of the inner dictionary. So what happens to the key of the outer dictionary? What happens to the key of the inner dictionary? Only if they know that concept, they will be able to answer this, right? So the keys of the inner dictionary that will go as a uh, column headings and the dictionary outer, sorry, that will go as the uh, row index and the uh, key of the outer dictionary that will go as the column headings, right? So there will be two columns and the column names will be one and two. Uh, now you have year one and year two. Now when you use year one and year two, again, these keys, they can be same, they can be different. But if they are same, you, it will come as a single row. But if they are different, they will be having different uh, rows, right? So that also that concept, uh, let them do it, let them practice it, experience it them, by themselves, then only they will remember it. Other explaining will not help them to remember all those things, right? So uh, try to make them uh, do uh, the, such a question where you 
you have a dictionary of dictionaries are the similarly list of list is also there right what happens to the values whether it will be coming as a row or it will be coming as a column okay that also has to be made clear to them now that is uh, to my question coming to session c we have uh, three mark question there are five three mark questions uh, right first one it is uh, based on uh, my uh, mysql uh, based on this table this is a table and uh, they will be giving the queries and they will be asked to write the output right so length of c name uh, were, uh, so length of, so when you decode this query you can say length of c name that will come as a heading here uh, from a student we are expecting only the answer that eight alone is expected from the child but if they can present it and exactly the same way as they are getting in the uh, output screen that will be very good right so let them practice by giving the heading also so they will never use uh, never write unwanted uh, columns or unwanted uh, um, i mean they will not write unwanted columns right so here length of a c name there is only one column mentioned in the query so they will be getting only one column there the, whatever comes after the select that will be coming as a column heading so length of c name will be the column heading and under that length of c name is uh, number of characters in the c name for the word the quantity is greater than 100 so after writing the column heading they have to come to the condition find out what is the condition pick out the row that satisfies the condition and choose the uh, output that they need right write the output select so, c name from purchase were month of dop month uh, year month date all those functions they have to be very very thorough right month is a month name is the if it is month name they will be getting the month name as january february etc or if it is month then they will be getting um, one two three four etc okay then uh, select mode quantity DOP. this is again uh, nested function that can also come nesting of the function quite uh, frequently they have used this so inside the mode function quantity and the day or day of dop so replace this day of dop with the uh, output and they will be getting two values and uh, the two numbers will be there they can easily find out the <coughs> output value mode value now next one is to write a python code so here it is to create a write a python code means they have to write the complete program and nothing is mentioned about the importing of the library so they have to start from the import statement uh, then they have to create the data and with the data they have to create the data frame right so one mark will be for each statement one mark will be for the pandas importing one mark will be for creating the data and one mark will be for creating the data frame right so in here instead of using this data one directly uh, in the uh, data frame method they have made it as a separate uh, variable and that variable is used in the function right so ask the students to follow this method itself create the variable separately and then use that variable in the either in the data frame method or in the series method again 28 question this again is a three mark question that is also from the data frame a data frame is given now when you teach the data frame teach them how to add a column how to add a row uh, how to display the values of a column how to display the values of a row how to drop a column how to drop a uh, row okay so all these are the main things that you have to teach them uh, add a column add a row uh, drop a column, drop a row, display a column, display a row, right? And uh, another thing that you have to make them thorough is the lock function, I lock function, and the slicing. If their slicing is thorough, they will be able to do the lock and the I lock. Make them uh, clearly understand the difference between lock and I lock, right? I lock uses the index and lock uses the name. But suppose the name is not given that right? if they are using the default index in the lock method, they can use the uh, index also. That is one exception for the lock method. Normally, when we say in the lock method, we can use only the uh, labels. That is the names that is given for the column and the row. But in case if, it, if they have not renamed the index or the column, if they are using the default index that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the lock method, they can use the index also. Okay. And in the slicing, 
uh, what happened, how you will give if it is a continuous uh, column or row that has to be displayed and how you have to give if it is uh, non-continuous rows and the columns, right? And uh, random columns and the columns, if they have to display, they have to put with a comma inside the square bracket, right? That concept also has to be taught to them. So here adding a column, simply it is a stock within square bracket. Uh, they have to give the column name and the values as a list of values. Adding a new book means you are going to add a new row. For adding a new row, you have to use the LOC method. Right? So LOC you have to give. Removing a column, you have to use the drop method. And in the drop method, the access parameter is very important. This access decides whether you are going to remove a column or a row, right? And access equal to one. What is access equal to one and what is access equal to zero? That is one more question. They can ask what is access equal to zero and what is access equal to one. Access equal to one represents the column and access equal to zero represents the rows. Then uh, this is a question from uh, societal impacts, right? Instead of directly asking what is cyber stalking or cyber uh, bullying, they have given you a situation and based on the situation, they have asked what is, what is happening to Nada, right? So the child should be thorough with what exactly will happen when she is a victim of cyber bullying or cyber stalking or any of the cyber crime, right? So here uh, cyber uh, stalking or cyber uh, uh, bullying is happening and if the, uh, this is a general answer what whenever uh, you are a victim of a cyber crime as a child if you are a child immediately you have to report it to your teachers parents or any elders right and of course we have got the cyber information technology act 2000 which helps you to deal all, with all the cyber crimes uh, this is again from uh, our question. This is an our question again from the same topic itself. Uh, societal embass, what is plagiarism? Uh, why is it punishable uh, offense? Because you are doing something against the law. Uh, plagiarism is a cyber crime. You are not allowed to do it. And if you, that is you are taking somebody else's uh, uh, property, IPR, without their permission. Right? So that is a crime, just like stealing. And how you can avoid plagiarism? What are the steps you had? That's, that's given in the textbook itself. Yes, what are the steps you can uh, follow if you want to avoid plagiarism? The uh, next question that is from I'm going a little bit first because it is already eight o'clock. Uh, we have uh, four more questions to complete, five more questions to complete. Based on the table, uh, that is again a, a simple query, writing the query, display the gender wise highest mark. Now here, uh, the confusion, most of the students, they have got a confusion whether to use, when to use the group by. So you can give them some tips like when the question contains a gender wise or for each gender or each category, that term each or wise is coming along with the aggregate function, then definitely they have to use the group by. Now, when you use the group by uh, some in some textbook, they say this gender has to appear in the select clause also, but no more. I mean, in uh, MySQL, that will not give you an error. So they can, if they want, they can put, or if they don't want it, then they know how to put. Uh, but when they write the theory exam, there was a confusion last time in the valuation camp whether to consider this or not. Right? So it is better uh, put this gender in the select clause also. Okay, then display city wise again, you have wise and you have the aggregate function. So definitely group by has to be used, right? Uh, display the total number of male and female students that is uh, gender uh, for gender. Here uh, they have not mentioned device or each, but still, you know, you have to get the number of male students and um, uh, number of females and that are only two gender, right? Either it will be male or it will be female. So for both the categories, you have to get the total number, right? So practically, when you think that you can understand that you have to use the group by function. Uh, what is the significance of group by clause? Uh, again, explain it. This is a theory question. So when they, they you ask the theory question, they will ask you to explain it with the help of an example, right? So that's the uh, same example they can quote, right? Then uh, that is section C. Now section D is five mark question. There will be three questions. One question from MySQL, one question will be from data frame, uh, I mean, and pandas, and uh, one question will be from the networking, right? Now here, most of the time, they will be asking you to write the uh, SQL query, right? So uh, they should know uh, which function they have to use to perform this particular task. It is not based on the table. Sometimes it may be based on a table. Sometimes they may directly give the raw data. Okay, so the child should know how to use it with the table and how to use it with the raw data. Okay, so here uh, in the string function, teach them, give them more practice on uh, sub SUB, STR or mid function. Uh, then INSTR function, 
uh, trim function, right? These are the three main function, left and right, right? Uh, these function, they have to be very thorough. That is the most of the time, the questions will be based on these uh, INSTR, SUBSTR, a uh, string function. Uh, the concat is also the left and right, okay? Uh, round function from the mathematical functions, they have to learn round and the uh, mode function. Round, a variety of round is the what happens when you give this value, second parameter. What happens when you are not giving this second parameter? What happens when it is a negative value? Okay. So that is uh, the 35 question, or you can get uh, the R question for that is explain it with the help of an example. Now, when they write the example, they have to write the output also. Okay. Uh, what you can say is quite clear from the name itself. You can just convert it into uppercase. Trim is remove the unwanted spaces from either ends. L trim, R trim, and trim is that right? L trim removes only from the left side. R trim removes only from the right side. Trim removes from both the sides. Mid function or SUBSTR function. Day name is the day name. Day uh, day name is the week name is the month name is the all those things you have to familiarize the child right. Power function, P O W function, mode function, all those functions right. A power to raise the one number to the second number. Um, this is uh, uh, from networking, right? They will be giving a situation. Sometimes the diagram will be given. Sometimes the diagram may not be given. They will give the number of uh, computers in each building and the distance between the buildings, right? This, the, this is a standard question. Uh, and first thing they will ask you to find out is what uh, there are some common questions that can come in this uh, session, right? Uh, like, uh, uh, where will you place the server? Where will you place the modem? Where will you, or where will you give the internet connectivity? Uh, then where will you place the switch or the hub? Where will you place the repeater, right? These are the standard questions. So, so make the ch child when to, uh, I mean, how to answer these uh, four questions, right? And uh, uh, in uh, one more thing, which I want to uh, mention here is uh, when you are using the repeater, right? Uh, the distance, uh, minimum distance, which you have to, uh, we should have to have a repeater, right? Uh, in uh, previous uh, years uh, textbooks, it is mentioned as 70 meter, but nowadays in most of the uh, textbook, it is mentioned as 100 meter, right? So it's uh, better you go for the 100 meter, right? Now it is the updated format, the new version, new textbooks, it is 100 meter is given as a minimum distance that is required uh, for placing a repeater. So teach the students as 100 meter itself, right? And what is the type of the network that will be formed, right? That you can uh, tell the students about the distance, right? So based on the distance, if it is in a building or in a campus, it will be local area network. If it is within a city or the city name is mentioned, it will be definitely man. And if it goes beyond the city, right? Between two cities or uh, between two states or between two countries or continents, that will be wide area network, right? And uh, sometimes uh, uh, one more question can be asked, like uh, two person are sitting uh, in, in the same room and they are sharing data with the help of a Bluetooth, uh, then that becomes a personal area network. But if they are using the internet, if they are sending it over the mail or if they are sending it over the WhatsApp or any social media, then that becomes the wide area network. So based on the technology also, not only the distance, based on the technology also, the type of uh, network can change. Right? And the largest one is internet. And drawing the cable layout, uh, suggest and draw. Sometimes they may give the question a suggest and uh, draw the cable network or sometimes it will be simply suggest a cable layout, right? Whatever it is, teach the student to write the name of the topology first and then draw the topology. Whatever be the question, let them write the name and then draw the topology, okay? And the best topology is the star topology, right? So teach them to draw the star topology. Whatever, otherwise when they are going for any other uh, uh, topology, they have to see the distance, right? Based on the distance, the topology may change right so rather than that uh, let them draw the star topology because already they know where to place the uh, server or which block they have to place the server put it in the middle and connect all the other blocks to that block that block right? server block that will be the easy way for the students to learn right so this is one more question how to draw um, the uh, shall i ask you a question yes ma'am uh, Ma'am, for repeater, if somebody writes, uh, if the distance is more than just 70 meters, uh, then will uh, the board give the mark? 
actually this was a, a discussion in the last uh, last year's evaluation camp uh, since both the answers were given the, like uh, 70 uh, according to the answer key it was 100 meters uh, but in some of the textbook it was mentioned as 70 meters also so that time we gave mark for both 70 and 100 right uh, so this time i don't know what is going to happen uh, so that's why uh, latest books in all the latest books it is mentioned as 100 meters so better teach the students to write 100 meters okay thank you ma'am okay. uh, ma'am one more question i have ma'am uh, yes. can i ask yes ma'am uh, ma'am uh, like uh, sometimes when we you know uh, we give the uh, layout sometimes it comes as bus topology and star topology also so like uh, which one should we prefer first is it bus topology or uh, star topology uh, uh, that's what i said bus topology when you're drawing the bus topology you have to look into the distance also right you have to put it in the correct orders but star topology is always best right Where whenever we correct the paper we always give mark for the uh, star topology so it will be better if you ask the child to draw the star topology always draw the star topology okay ma'am so in which case should we ask the bus topology in case they uh, mention only the distance is to be considered uh, uh, like normally uh, they won't ask you anything specifically like that. They will ask, simply ask the child to suggest a suitable cable layout, right? Now, in the answer key, uh, uh, when we are evaluating the paper, any topology, if the child draws, whether the best topology, star topology, any topology it is, we will be giving mark for the child. Right? So they will never uh, mention like the child has to draw best topology there. I mean, all these years, uh, I have not seen such a question where the, uh, in the question, they were, have asked to draw only the best topology. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, then the type of, uh, I mean, uh, the networking device, uh, hub or switch, it has to be placed in all the blocks because there will be more than one computer in all the block. Uh, where to place the server, I mean, uh, modem, it will be in the server block, right? So that are the questions. And then the type of web page, that is also an important question. What are the two different types of uh, um, uh, web pages and what is the language used in each, uh, each uh, web page and when to use the static and when to use the dynamic. Whenever, sorry, whenever you have to interact with the uh, with the uh, user or whenever the content keeps varying keeps changing depending on the user you have to go for the dynamic web page and if the content is going to remain the same for all the users wherever he opens it is going to be a static and static web pages are created with html and the dynamic web pages are created either with asp jsp or php even Python is also mentioned somewhere, right? So dynamic web pages are interactive web pages, right? And face-to-face uh, -face communication, of course, it is video conferencing, and sometimes they may ask the protocol also, VOIP. VOIP is a protocol, and it is a technology used for uh, telephone over the internet. Now, 33rd question, that is from the pipeline. So uh, sometimes they may give the code and in between you will be having a uh, fill in the blanks where you will have to answer or uh, based on the given chart, you have to write the complete code, right? Any question or they may ask to write the com uh, uh, I mean, uh, particular statements also, right? So the basic uh, statements that are used for drawing up chart, right? That is import statement, creation of the X parameter, Y parameter, uh, then uh, the plotting method, right? These four things, then uh, finally the show, right? These are the main things that you have to teach. And depending on the chart, they have to put either the title or the X label and the Y label, right? X label, Y label, title, legend. These are the four things that normally comes in a chart. Uh, plus you will be having uh, the uh, normal method. Normal methods means the bar method or the uh, barish method or the plot method. Histogram, they rarely used to ask in this, but histogram, uh, it can come in one mark question, right? Uh, what, what is the type of uh, chart that is used when you have to represent a continuous data uh, or uh, uh, what is that uh, data over an equal intervals of time or frequency, which represents a frequency. So if these terms of frequency, uh, continuous data, all the, or equal intervals, all those things are coming, then the child has to write it as histogram. Right? The discrete data, that is uh, uh, bar chart, right? So that is uh, from chart part. 
and in this case term paper they have not asked anything from the csv but sometimes you may get one mark question or uh, one uh, one or two one mark question from the csv also which is a method that is used read method write method these two methods you have to teach them properly uh, next question is uh, either it will be the chart will be given and you will have to write the code or they will ask you to write the complete python code or there will be some uh, blanks will be there and uh, statement one statement two etc will be mentioned and you will be asked to write the statements right so all those steps uh, importing uh, creation of the parameters x parameter y parameter using the plot method x label uh, y label uh, legend title and the show and save fake these three things you have to teach the child that is about section c uh, section d section e you will be getting two questions uh, former question it is one question will be from the database and one question will be according to the sample paper one question is from the database and one question is from the uh, python part right it may be either from the series or it may be from the uh, uh, data frame right from this uh, data frame again it is uh, to write the query it is always writing the query or writing the uh, function i mean using the function or uh, function it can be as told it can be either on the uh, uh, raw data or it can be on the table right the previous question was on the raw data now this is based on the table right or convert it into lower case display the lowest price that is minimum is simple questions only two there are, there are three questions the first two carry, questions carries one mark each and the third question carries two mark right and the choice is given the choice is only for the third question not for the entire question or for the first and the second it is only for the third one right so when you discuss the sample question paper to the students uh, please mention it properly the uh, or question is only for the third question it is a two mark question uh, it contains both the group by having all those things that is why it is a two mark question okay and how to use this uh, year one uh, i mean date function in the condition that also you have to teach the students right sometimes it may be given like from the table um, display all those uh, employees who have joined in uh, in the year in a particular year or in a particular month right so they have to use the month function to take the month from it and then equate it to that given month so all those employees who have joined in may right so you have to write month of uh, uh, that uh, hire date equal to may or equal to that number if you are using month name it has to be equated to uh, the name of the month otherwise if you are using month it has to be equated to the number okay so that also you have to teach the child right so this is about the uh, uh, question based on the database and this last question that is based on the data frame a data frame is given uh this column the first column it looks like a table right so they should not get confused with the data frame and the table now this one is not having a, a column heading that means this becomes the index right and all the other columns are having heading so that will be the normal columns for the data frame right the shape uh, what is the shape so they have to put it in the round bracket so that's why i told you you have to ask the students to look at the output also right and now when you teach this attribute the attribute is not having the bracket right so sometimes they may ask which is the function which will give the output as 5 comma 4 right which is a statement so in the options they may give shape with bracket and without bracket so normally the students will go for the answer with the bracket right so attributes is not having the bracket and the spelling column columns okay spelling also has to be very clear right so ask them to learn it properly carefully rather carefully uh that this is slicing so that's why i told you slicing and i lock are using the simple slicing using i lock and lock those also those are also important right so here uh, the third part they have to find out the uh they have to display the the output i mean the columns and the rows right so they have to either use the lock or i lock right so whether they have to use the lock method or they have to use the i lock method what is the difference right lock includes the stop value uh i lock excludes the stop value that also has to be made clear to the students okay now the last one is to find the difference you can directly ma yes ma'am can i ask you a question yes ma'am uh, ma'am, for this B section, if a student write, uses I lock, is there any problem? Not at all. They can use either I lock or they can use lock. It's up okay. to them. But when they use the I lock, the range will be different. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, yeah. that is, uh, they have to exclude the stop value. So okay, they can okay. either use lock or I lock. Nothing is okay. mentioned in the question. So they should get the output, that's all. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, right. 
so that is uh, about this uh, log dialog this part log method i log method make it very clear to the students most of the questions uh, most of the time they make mistake in these questions right so that is the last question uh, so we have uh, finished the sample question paper completely and i think i have explained it everything which you need uh, now it's your time if you have got any queries you can ask excuse me ma'am yes ma'am okay uh, in the data frame we are teaching the student how to add a new row and a new column is uh, do we need to teach them the insert method uh insert method actually it is not given in the syllabus but in uh, one of the previous years question paper i have seen uh, a question using insert also uh, similarly okay. the rename method also how to rename the columns and the rows that two methods also you can teach them okay what about the uh, functions for pop and to delete uh, a column uh, normally they used to ask only the drop function how okay. to use the drop function uh, in if you want see uh, that's what i told whatever additional you can give to the students that will always be better right because deleting the rows or deleting the columns sometimes if they may, those are also the methods to uh, delete values right so sometimes they may ask the pop also sometimes they may, it may come in the multiple choice question right so the other question will be which method is used to Uh, delete the columns from a uh, data frame, and they would have given all the three options, and they, the child has to pick up which method is not used, or it will be one, two, three only, or one and two only, one only. That kind of option can also come. So in that case, the child should know that there is a method called pop also, or del can also be used. Del statement can also be used to uh, remove the columns. But, uh, but actually, that methods are included in the pandas too in the NCERT textbook, right? Uh, no, actually, that is given there. But some of the, the some of the portions which is given in pandas too, it it is applicable to pandas one also, just like this delete method, right? Okay. So we can. That's why the child should not be at loss in case if that is asked in the uh, exam. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, uh, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am, definitely. Ma'am, for questions like um, there was a question like, is the plagiarism uh, punishable? So, is it only that they should write uh, it's not punishable, or they should uh, give the explanation? And they have to give the explanation. If the question is, is it a crime or is it not a crime, then they can give either yes or no. But if the question is why is it or uh, uh, it's like uh, why is it punishable? The um, when we evaluate the paper, we expect the child to explain it, right? So it's always better you explain it. And there is another type of question also like <clears throat> you will be having two part for the question, right? Uh, is this right? Uh, justify your answer. So normally, what the child will do is they will justify. They will not answer is it true or is it false. right so these two has to be considered as two different questions first they have to answer is it true or is it false is it right or is it wrong whatever it is they have to answer with a yes or a no answer then they have to write the explanation as a separate part okay same thank way, you uh, same way the question sometimes there can be one question like what is the use of order by clause how is it different from group by Right, so they expect the answer to be two different answers. So first, you have to write what is the uh, purpose of uh, order by clause. Then you have to write the difference between order by and group by. So in the difference, you have to mention uh, what is order by and what is uh, group by. Right, so the answer has to be repeated. Okay, ma'am. And uh, ma'am, do we want to take a truncate function in SQL? Truncate normally it's not there in the syllabus, and I have not seen that in the question paper also. Uh, but if you wish your, uh, that uh, your child should know that, you can simply tell them what is the difference between truncate and round. But they should not get confused. I normally used to teach both the things, round function as well as the truncate function. Okay, ma'am. I have not seen that in the question papers. Okay, so, ma'am. CBSE don't know what the CBSE will ask. So to be okay. on the safer side, teach them both the functions. Okay, ma'am. Uh, is there any um, clarifications regarding the lab examinations? Hello. Do you mean? Is it the date part that you were uh, no. you are asking? No, is no, no, no. 
not the age part i'm asking about the programs like uh, how many pandas and how many matplotlib do we need to uh, do a student need to attend uh see that uh, that depends on the school right normally they have not, they have asked to write the programs uh, like uh, this many programs in pandas this many uh, four programs in matplotlib like that but in the question paper uh, you can uh, include both right you can put two parts in because it is an eight mark question right so for eight mark question you can divide that to two parts five mark you can give for the python pandas and the three mark you can go give for the matplotlib uh that you have to discuss with your external and the design okay ma'am okay okay thank you ma'am but cbc has not specifically told anything regarding there should be one pandas and there should be one matplotlib nothing like that was mentioned anywhere in the uh, uh, syllabus curriculum thank you ma'am yes same so there is a question in the chat mm -hmm. box by justina ma'am in the syllabus there is only data frames creation from dictionary of series list of dictionaries but in sample question paper dictionary of dictionary list of lists are asked yes ma'am that's what i told like in the syllabus they have mentioned only very little things like uh, uh, they uh, they have not mentioned how the uh, list of dictionary or dictionary of list all those things has to be used right so give all those options to the students right what will happen if you use a list of list or if you simply use a list uh, list of dictionaries are the dictionary of list are there all those combinations are there right so it's always better you give them a practice right uh, the dot operator they have never they have not mentioned anywhere in the uh, syllabus how to use the dot operator it is only the square bracket that we normally use but in the last year question paper for the objective type they have used that dot operator also right so you cannot say it is not in the syllabus we are supposed to teach all those things so whatever possible combinations is available you have to teach them yes, if you have any other doubts please ma'am can i yes ma'am myself shamnath okay ma'am uh, regarding the python panda second which means a descriptive series is is it needed for min max uh, that question no no that does not include i mean max count sum all those things are coming in the second part pandas 2 which uh, is not the right. it is the deleted syllabus so the, they will not normally they will not ask any question from that session but um, we can't trust the cbc that's why <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh, uh, but uh, this is uh, like you know it is an advanced topic when you use the count or min or max uh, uh, in the way it behaves it is absolutely complicated right so uh -huh. uh, we can believe that cbsc won't ask such questions uh, i mean uh, they won't that last last year also it was really good right ma that but last year they didn't ask any question from that session <clears throat> right ma'am ma'am uh, one more thing uh, from the as uh, as we discussed the repeater is the uh, more than 100 meter right ma'am yes uh, more than 100 meter but in 100 meter is uh, is possible repeater can place definitely if the distance between the blocks is more than 100 meter you can place a repeater in between those so, two blocks uh, so which means block a to b the 100 meter is the distance so we can yes. place right ma'am yes and the one more thing here i want to mention us uh, say uh, where will you place the repeater right so right. Uh, the distance between all the block is given in the question right but the child right. has to uh, answer this question according to the layout he has used right suppose he has drawn a, a star topology there will okay. say, and they say a is the uh, server right so there will be a oh. connection from a to b uh, and mm -hmm. a, uh, a to c there will not be any uh. connection between b and c so if the okay. distance between b and c is more than 100 meter he don't know how to place a repeater there because he is not using that connection in his layout right so according to the layout he has given he has to tell where he has to uh, place the repeater that is a better right yeah okay yeah. ma'am so uh, you can tell the students like when they answer this question they can say according to the given above layout use that clause according to the layout given layout or according to the above layout the distance between these two blocks are more than 100 meter so we have to place a repeater between these two blocks but now if your child is uh, draw this uh, like a best topology means uh, shortest to past as you said is means uh, to consider the uh, shortest distance right Yes. So if you are uh, students are drawn by the uh, by the uh, star best topology, 
then according to that layout if any connection is more than 500 meter he has to i mean sorry 100 meter he has to place a repeater there if there is no uh, blocks or uh, no connection which is more than 100 meter he need know how to use a repeater okay. that can also be an answer thank you ma'am thank you uh, ma'am i have one more query ma'am uh, in some of the uh, you know question banks i saw a question like uh, Uh, which of the following devices should be you know placed to provide unauthorized network access so in that i saw the option as router also uh, isn't it uh, is it because the firewall is being implemented in the router so which one should be prefer to give the answer if in the question if you have firewall firewall is the best answer firewall uh, firewall it can be implemented either in the software format or it can be implemented in the hardware format also suppose the choice is not having the firewall and only router is uh, mentioned in the uh, choice then you can go for the router because router is intelligent uh, it can identify the authorized users and it will allow only the authorized users to use uh, use the or pass the network and it is in some routers our uh, firewall is already installed it is uh, is coming along with the router okay thank you so depending on the choice the child has to answer okay yes ma'am i do have a query yes ma'am ma'am uh, this question like to display the third fourth and fifth columns from the sixth to ninth rows of a data frame so should we consider it as a label or a positional index um this is actually a confusion yeah uh, because last year also the same questions were coming in the sample paper and the students also had the same problem it was a bit confusing uh see if this question is coming in the multiple choice question uh huh. he can choose according to the option given Mm. right sometimes it will be like uh, uh, they will be treated as the position right the first second and the third will be treated as the position and the yes. uh, lock or a range will be given accordingly right so yeah. in that case uh, he can choose it as the position or uh. if it is uh, if the options are given treating this 1 2 3 as the index then he can yeah. go accordingly right he can because the same question in two sample papers the answer was treated as in one question paper it was label and in the other one it was positional index the answer key Mm-hmm. Answer, uh, answer key. I mean, uh, the sample question papers. If it is not provided by the CBSC, it will be by the public, pub, private publishers, right? So the answers uh, uh, will be different, right? Uh, no, these two things were like uh, sample papers from the CBSC website. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, that is actually a confusing question. I hope yeah. CBSC won't ask such confusing question in the board exam. <laughs> and okay. uh, like you know in in such cases both will be given answers right okay. uh, it will be treated uh, uh, that's how i mean uh, before evaluating we normally used to have a discussion and in that discussion uh, the best i um, mean whatever is favorable for the child we will decide right so this you need know how to uh, let the child know students know it's it should be among the teachers right so hmm. what we normally we used to do is uh, hmm. we will choose the favorable and uh, i mean uh, both the answers as the correct answer and we will be giving mark for both the answers Okay, whether okay. it is taken as a position or it is taken as a leg oh okay. thank you in yes, case if no. there is a question confusion in the question paper definitely that will be handled in a child friendly manner okay ma'am yes ma'am that is very true cbse is always child friendly and they always consider the problems or issues that are there in the question paper so yes ma'am uh, and the yeah. uh, decision will be always favorable favorable for the favorable students. to children yes so i hope all the queries are over now it is already 8:30 ma'am uh, can i ask one last question yes 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 please go ahead uh, ma'am uh, if the repeated distance if they have given it as 100 meter should we need to place or it should be more than 100 meter 100 meter also you can include no issue okay so equal to or 100, more than 100 100 or more than 100 okay okay thank you so much ma'am yes could you please stop share yes ma'am sure. ma yes hope it's okay ma'am so dear teachers if you have any other doubts you can definitely contact uh, 
ma'am, so that you can clear your further queries. Uh, ma'am will be available for you. Uh, many of you will be knowing her uh, personally. So she is very helpful. Uh, so do contact her and uh, clear your mis uh, doubts and cons uh, concerns. So uh, no, thank you. At any time, uh, that will be my pleasure. Whatever I can do for uh, others, definitely uh, I'll be there. You can contact me at any time. Uh, yes. They're asking for your phone number. If possible, will you be able to share with them? Yes, yeah, sure, ma'am. I'll put it in the chat box. Yes. Bye. And Marina, ma'am, is asking yeah. about project. Uh, sorry, ma'am, I didn't hear. Uh, about, project. Um, about, about a project, I am asking. The student has to do one project. That's enough, you know, it is big or small. Any size is small not project. important, right? But uh, they have to, do, uh, I mean, it will be better if they use CSV uh, and uh, Pantas because MySQL connectivity is deleted. It is not coming in their syllabus, right? So it is better. They, they have got the freedom to either use the CSV file or the MySQL file. But in case if they, any query, uh, if the external ask any viva question from the MySQL, it will be difficult for them to answer. So it is better uh, use the CSV file and, the, and do the project. Uh, try to include the data frames CSV file, Matplotlib, everything inside the project that is enough. The size of the project is not important. But they have to do it. Matplotlib is also necessary. Uh, yes, ma'am. That has to be included in the project. Project should cover what all things they have learned, right? So uh, let them take any data, uh, store the data in the CSV, take it into a data frame and represent like it. Any one, any one uh, data can be plotted on the graph. Uh, like if it's library management or something like that, they can take the sales of one, the certain this of books and just plot the graph. Uh, Is that can put like uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, the frequency of uh, or uh, the uh, books which the students are taking very frequently, uh, okay. or uh, they can represent the, I mean, how many, uh, the, the class wise uh, report they can give, right? How the classes, uh, how many books are taken by each class, all those things they can okay. represent. So whenever you take it data, definitely that can be represented in the form of a graph because we are analyzing. That is the main part, right? Uh, data frame or data. Pandas is used for data analysis. Data analysis will be complete only when you represent it in a, a pictorial format. That is a graphical format. So always include a graph, a matplotlib in your project. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Hope I have answered all Can your questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Insight, you also for giving me this uh, technical support and uh, CSSK, that is uh, Conclave, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And I also thank all the teachers for patiently listening to me for this uh, one and a half hours. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you very much. Actually, it is really commendable for having them here even at uh, 8.30 at night waiting for long to listen to you and enrich themselves. So thank you so much, teachers. Please uh, fill the uh, form, uh, e-certificate form before you leave, uh, if you need that. So thank you so very much. Thank you, CSCK, Sandra Savodhya Conclave Kottem for organizing these kind of enriching, empowering session for the educators. Thank you to all the resource persons who've joined with us. And this is the final session of uh, phase two online session of Sandra Savodhya Conclave Kottem and CCSK. Thank you so much. So I'm winding up the second phase. Yes. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma Thank you, teachers. Gigi, ma'am, you can end the session as well. Yes, sir. You are the host. I forgot to mention your name. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. My pleasure. Okay. I am not able to end the session. Uh, Gigi, ma'am, is the host. She should be able to end the host yeah. session. Yeah, I, I will be ending it, sir. Okay. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.